Okay, one student gave the answer V equals omega A to the question. Now, uh, V equals omega A is the velocity of the reference point on the reference circle. It's not the velocity of the oscillator, but it's closely related to the velocity of the oscillator. So uh, instead of uh, going to the approach I'd intended, uh, well, actually I'd intended to do this and then come back to the circular model, I started with the circular model. So what we have is we have uh, the circle. We have the displacement A or the position A here, one half A being the position along the x-axis, which is where we're assuming the uh, pendulum or the oscillator moves. Um, so we have position one half A, the position twice as close to the origin as this one. Now at that position, we've got the uh, R vector. But more importantly, we have the velocity vector tangent to the circle at this point. So my question was then, what's the magnitude and the angle of that velocity vector? You should work that out. Okay? Given this information without looking at anything else, what is the velocity? Uh, and the velocity vector will be something times i plus something times j. Fill in the lengths. Okay, well, hopefully you've done that. Uh, we got a couple of answers. One answer uh, that V was at angle 135 degrees, but 135 degrees is here, and the projection of that point is at square root of 2 over 2, or about 0.71 times the distance from 0 to A, not the halfway position. The halfway position turns out that. Uh, this angle would be 60 degrees, or pi over 3 radians. Okay, so that puts the vector v, which is, uh, if you start with the 60 degree position, then rotate 90 degrees, you get to the v vector. So it's going to be 160 plus 90 degrees, or 150 degrees. So v has magnitude omega a, as we know, and it's at angle 150 degrees. So knowing the special angles, the multiples of 30 and multiples of 45 degrees, and their sines and cosines, and everybody should have that at their fingertips for instant use, um, we get uh, these expressions, OK? The uh, cosine of 150 degrees is negative square root of 3 over 2. The sine is 1 half. Uh, you get that by <coughs> sketching. Uh, anyhow, that's that's. I'm not going to go into the details of that. That's high school trigonometry. And I, I think everybody pretty much knows that. I think we saw that people were pretty good with that. OK, anyhow, these approximations then. V is about negative 0.87 omega A times I plus 0.5 omega A times J. And then what we get is Vx equals negative square root of 3 over 2 omega a times the i vector. And that's the velocity of the oscillator at this point. Now let's confirm that by using an energy analysis. We saw before the kinetic energy is 3 halves ka squared. So we just set 1 half mv squared equal to that. <coughs> and we get uh, the multiplied by 2, we get 3 fourths. Divide k by m. We get omega squared because, remember, omega is the square root of k over m. So k over m equals omega squared. And we take the square root. We get plus or minus the square root of 3 over 2 times omega a. Uh, both the plus and the minus would be valid solutions for the velocity because the oscillator goes back and forth. I said halfway to equilibrium. Well, this is halfway to equilibrium, even though it doesn't look like it. I drew it a little too close to the origin. Um, but this is halfway to equilibrium. But there's also a point over here that's halfway to equilibrium. At this point, we know that the oscillator is moving toward equilibrium, so that uh, the velocity would be in the negative direction in this case, 
negative square root of 3 over 2 omega a. At this point, it would be moving in the, it could be moving in the positive or negative direction. And actually, same here, it could be moving in the positive or negative direction. So what I was about to say doesn't even need to be said. It's clear that the velocity can be positive or negative at either this point halfway to equilibrium or this point halfway to equilibrium. Okay, now, question, what's the velocity at position x? Now, this is a little more involved. Um, we want to take a little time to do this. I recommend that you take whatever time is necessary to get as much of that done as possible. But now, we're going to continue. Okay, well, the kinetic energy at position x is 1 half kA squared minus 1 half kx squared. Okay, the potential energy uh, the total energy is 1 half kA squared. The potential energy at position x is 1 half kx squared. The kinetic energy is going to be the difference between the total energy and the energy at position x. So we simply set 1 half mv squared equal to this expression. And we uh, divide through by m uh, and multiply through by 2, take the square root. Uh, I'll write a couple of intermediate steps here. I didn't write them in class. I just alluded to them because I assume everybody can do that. But what we, what we get is v squared equals the square root of k over m a squared minus k over m x squared, which equals the square root of k over m and um, I said v squared. Um, What I've done is I've multiplied by 2 and divided by m. So now I get, and then I take the square root. OK. So we get v, and it's going to be plus or minus. This expression, very simple rearrangement. And then we get plus or minus the square root of k over m times the square root of a squared minus x squared. The square root of k over m is omega, so we get v equals omega times the square root of a squared minus x squared.